You know, my passion for whitetails actually started as a kid. And a lot of people would say, well, how could that be? You know, you grew up in Philadelphia. My dad would scoop us up, my brother and I, and we'd call it camera hunting. And what my dad would do is, you know, position us, in, you know, along a log and give us his camera and say, hit the button as many times as you want. When they look the way they do when they put you in awe and, uh, and you can put a name around them or you got some history with them, that's what's fascinating to me about whitetail hunting. All the things that we put into it, it's a story, it's a journey, it's, it's their life, it's our life, and you mix the two together and it's a passion. Slap this up, it's hot. Nothing else we can do about it. Got all our gear in here yesterday. Now it's time to get busy. So a lot of people ask me about my drive, where does it come from, what's the roots? Um, my simple answer is it was created one day when I was nine years old. You see, I was jumped at knife point, not two blocks from my house. Five 17 year olds from the projects thought that it was a great day to go bike shopping and I just seemed to have the one they wanted. But since that day, I've always told myself there's not anything that I can't get through ever again. So one day my mother asked, uh, what happened to your knee? And with no pain, yet the same question to myself, uh, we quickly realized my body was beginning to fill up with inflammation from my knees down to my ankles. Uh, thus, the reason I could barely get out of bed and it took till lunchtime to somewhat walk normal. And then again tomorrow, uh, every night they'd swell up. Every morning I'd come downstairs on my butt, waiting for breakfast, waiting for it to go away. You see, that's when I picked up my first bow, the one that was mine, the one I put behind the couch every day and got every day I came home from school. That's when I became an archer. That's when this sport grew into my life, and that's when I became the bow hunter that I strive to be. And I think that every arrow I ever put in the air gave me a positive thought that I've walked forward from that day on. whether some people get it or not. When I call it therapy, well, I guess there could have been worse therapy. I guess I could have listened to this doctor or that doctor or ate this medicine or, you know, just turn around and, and been in the wheelchair, you know? And maybe that's just it. Maybe I don't know any better. If I hunt hard, then I'll just face life hard. That's how I roll the two together. It truly is a passion. I don't know how else to, 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 to stop. You know, I can't, and I'm thankful for that, actually. Back east, we used to hunt state game lands. We used to knock on doors. Um, we used to go to Ohio and drive around for the first day, day and a half if that's what it took, or rainy days. Try to get permission, try to earn permission, put it that way. With that goes, you know, if you don't own something, you're gonna have some other exterior battles. Um, we've had poachers, we've had trespassers, we've had headless bodies show up. There's, there's not a big deer behind every tree out here in the Midwest, but if you put the standards on yourself and you try to hunt the biggest deer you can find, there should be usually a, Oh my gosh, moment every season. That is split, 70 freaking yards. This deer has wore me out. Yes, I go to work, I travel every week, I get on an airplane every week. Then of course, you know, a lot of people ask me, well, how do I have the time to do this? Or is that all you talk about? So it's a balance that I haven't quite figured out yet. Um, I know it's a sacrifice. I know it's, it's sacrificed other, other people. Friends and family see less of me. It's the one thing that actually recharges my batteries for the other two-thirds of the year, I guess. 
you know, my mindset around my gear is, uh, you know, I try to get the most out of it. So of course, you know, a lot of people ask me about the gym and, you know, how many pounds I shoot and all the above. And, and, and we all know we can do it with less and I, I just condone a good setup. I, I love building setups. I love helping kids and women shoot the best arrow they can shoot out of their bow. So my setup is, yes, it's, it's extreme at this point. You know, it's high pounds, it's a heavy arrow. And you know, when I'm 80 and, you know, hunting out of ground blinds, I guess, you know, we'll shoot less, but for fun now, the challenge is it, it all goes back to what you can't do. So I, I, I've always been this way. You know, when I was told I couldn't do something, I, I, I do more, I try to do extra, get more time out of it, you know? Uh, I didn't necessarily like school, but work has been kind of that way. So I, I've always put more time into my work, more time into my, my passions, and uh, you know, it comes out in archery, comes out in hunting. Look at this guy. <laughs> Dude, look how wide he is. It didn't just so happen that I felt like filming hunts one day. I mean, this started years ago with television shows as a kid, as nice therapy, and then strapping one on my stabilizer one day. Way back in college, we put a camcorder on the bow, we started filming hunts, and that led to one camera after another, and, and here we are, you know? And if somebody can't go with me, of course, you know, I'm out there by myself, so. If you've got eight seconds to kill him and you're asking me if I'm on him, you know, I've got four seconds to kill him because I'm moving that camera and, and, and hiking it back and, and making sure we're making a great shot. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. I just killed stud. Yeah, baby. Yes. Been working so hard and long hours and four airplanes a week, man. Just putting it out there. Working hard. Praying to be out here. Praying you're not missing the great times. But warm weather, full moon, and finally a cold snap having the week off Thanksgiving and uh, two tags in our pocket. This is on my little farm. This is a buck I know very well. He's gone downhill over the years and uh, we've had several encounters with him. Uh, trying to make all decisions through the rangefinder and the camera and it's time to get an arrow in the air and I'm very thankful for it. You know, so I think it was uh, the long rides to Ohio. I think it was building resumes in college. You know, what do you want to do with your life? What, what kind of job do you want? I always wanted to work in the industry. I made that pretty clear. I got on an airplane and started going to trade shows and I looked people in the eye that looked back at me and said, really, you know, you love our products that much? I, I do. And I'm thankful that chasing a dream, so to speak, in a lot of people's eyes, led to some of the careers that have come my way. And, uh, and I love working in this industry. You know, with the successes and the failures, there's always gonna be gratitude. Uh, that's the one thing I'm most thankful for, is that I've never lost where I've come from. I'm thankful for the people that are in my life. Uh, I try to give back as much as I can, and uh, I never wanna take a day without acknowledging where I come from and who's helped me get where I'm going. <laughs> Oh my God, he's going down. There is no losing. Uh, for me, it's winning and learning. I love to win, and when I'm losing, theoretically, I guess I'm learning because I'm trying not to make that mistake again. We all make mistakes in life, family, friends, relationships. It's, you're human. Um, do you have a heart? Do you care? Yeah, big one, so I'm, uh, I'm thankful for that because uh, if you care about things and you're thankful at the same time, uh, usually you can mix what you love to do with the ones you love. Um, this is a journey and my story started back then and I'm excited to share it with you guys. I'm Chris Hunter, I was born to bow hunt and in my heart, the fun has just begun. <laughs>